Introduction to Terraform. Learning Objectives. So we'll do an introduction of Infrastructure as Code, and then we'll get into what is Terraform, and then we'll provide some resources in regards to Cisco and Terraform. Let's get started. Introduction to Infrastructure as Code. So Infrastructure as Code is the process of managing and provisioning computer data centers through machine-readable definition files rather than physical hardware configuration or interactive configuration tools. Now, what's interesting here is, is that at one point in time, we talked about moving uh, firewalls, as an example, into a web GUI. And there was a lot of hype about your old school command line, I want a GUI. Now we've come full circle, and now we've got this advanced CLI, almost, right? Programmatic way of configuring the firewall. But this includes everything from an infrastructure perspective. So we're going to codify our infrastructure. Core principles of infrastructure as code, it's got to be reproducible. you got to reliably rebuild at any element of the infrastructure without effort. It needs to be disposable. It needs to be easily created, destroyed, replaced, resized, and move any element within a dynamic infrastructure as needed. It needs to be consistent. It should drive consistency throughout your entire infrastructure outside of subtle nuances such as IP addresses. This should eliminate configuration drift. And repeatable. All actions carried out within the infrastructure should be repeatable, which is the benefit of driving towards a programmatic outcome. And change. Predicting future needs has always been very difficult, but change should be afforded at any point to accommodate the needs of the business. Infrastructure should support the ability to safely and quickly make changes as frequently as needed. Now, you got to think about infrastructure as an API. The concepts of API drives our ability to achieve programmatic outcomes that align to the core principles of infrastructure as code. So again, it goes back to those core principles, reproducible, disposable, consistent, repeatable, and accommodate change. Now, infrastructure as an API will want to be able to request resources as needed, add services that add value to the business, build with flexibility to adapt and change as needed, and solutions become reusable. Now, DevNet's going to be your friend here. There's the link to Cisco's DevNet in regards to a lot of the programmatic capabilities within the Cisco portfolio. Now, if you look at provisioning versus configuration management, the concept of API drives our ability to achieve that programmatic outcome. This aligns to those core principles within infrastructure as code. When we look at infrastructure provisioning, we think of tools like Terraform, AWS CloudFormation, Azure Resource Manager, Google Cloud Deployment Manager, Pulumi. And the configuration management is Ansible, Chef, Puppet, SaltStack. Think of infrastructure as building the core infrastructure to support the services that you're going to deliver to the business. And configuration management is going to configure the nuances within the services themselves. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Infrastructure provisioning tends to be immutable. So every change is new. It's declarative. This means you write code to define target state that we want to achieve. So this is the ultimate outcome and it's agentless. So for the most part, there's no agents that are involved here whatsoever. Now configuration management tends to be mutable. So this updates versions of software and changes are done in real time. It's procedural versus declarative. So this is write code that specifies step by step to drive a specific outcome. And then it is agent-based for the most part, so agents are installed on the system itself. Now, infrastructure lifecycle is really delivering and empowering teams to adapt quickly to a dynamic need that the business requires. So think about just-in-time services. So microservices comes up as capacity is needed, and then it disappears. Well, you might need supporting infrastructure and system configurations that need to happen during this time. And this is where something like infrastructure as code can come in and support it. We want to provision. So this is set up the environment, create new servers, the network, et cetera, load balancers. We need to configure. This might be installing the applications on servers and managing the applications. Deployment. This is getting all the processes and services up and running as expected. This includes initial setup and should consider changes as well. 
monitor is ensure the infrastructures are operating as expected, and then adjust accordingly, and then finally destroy, right? Scale up as needed, scale down when no longer needing that service. And then we iterate. So value of infrastructure as code is self-service. So once codified, its repeatable outcome can be leveraged by any group requiring infrastructure. So once we build this, we can actually pass this off to development teams to drive specific outcomes that they require. Speed, the time to deliver consistent based infrastructure versus that traditional model that we know takes significant amount of time in comparison to infrastructure as code. Safety, so consistent, repeatable, and less prone to errors. Easy access and understanding, so we can read the configuration files to have a good understanding of what the infrastructure looks like. Now, versioning control. This is infrastructure that's got versions that are assigned to it so we know what state we're in. And now we can debug a little bit more easily. We can audit, and a big win here is we can revert if something happens when we deploy a new version, we can fall back to the previous version. Now validation, this is code review before deployment and run through static analysis tools because we're talking code here. And, and obviously the ability to reuse, develop modules that can be reused with every product within the environment that drives towards infrastructure as code. Now let's jump into Terraform. Now, Terraform is a tool for building and changing and versioning of infrastructure. And it does this safely and efficiently. It can manage existing and popular service providers as well as custom in-house solutions. And so at the bottom image there, you can see you got a practitioner, you've got infrastructure as code, you develop your code, and then you've got uh, the ability to plan. So mock the run through to see what the outcomes are going to be and then apply that to the infrastructure. In fact, make the changes. And then there's destroy and some other things that you can certainly leverage from Terraform. Now, Terraform was created by HashiCorp back in 2014. It's open source, it's written in Go, it's pluggable, and they have a commercial product called Terraform Enterprise. Now, Terraform basics include the ability to build, change, and provide version control. We can leverage multiple cloud and infrastructure providers and services. So think I can deploy and deliver in AWS, Azure, in my VMware deployment that's on-premise. Lots of different ways of driving that, that outcome. It has consistent reusable outcomes and it's API agnostic. So how do I get started? Well, you can go to Terraform, download the appropriate package for your operating system. You unzip the the Terraform binary file, you make sure your paths are set up correctly, and then you have options. So here's an example. You have the main commands which are in it, prepare your working directory for other commands, validate, check whether or not the configuration is valid, plan, show the changes required by the current configuration, and apply, which is actually going to update the infrastructure, and then destroy is gonna revert anything that you have deployed. Terraform keeps track of all the changes needed and the order in which they need to be deployed. For example, if an internet gateway object needs to be created and assigned first before you can actually assign it to an asset, then you wanna make sure that that's created before assigning it to an asset. Infrastructure lifecycle, as I mentioned, provision, configure, deploy, monitor, and destroy. And so how does that align to Terraform? Well, we've got Terraform initialization, you got Terraform plan. What is it gonna do to the infrastructure? Then apply, I'm gonna make the changes. Monitor exists like anything else. And then you've got Terraform destroy, and then you iterate. So some of the details of the configuration. So there's, there's a couple of core areas, the provider block, which is used to configure the named provider. So this is responsible for creating and managing resources. So for example, if I want to do something within AWS or VMware or ESXi, as in the example here, I've got to pull down the details around how I'm going to be able to do that. How does it translate my configuration file into action against the actual uh, resource that I'm trying to make changes to? And so they've got a registry and tons of providers available for you. And you can see some specifics there that are called out around the host name, host port, SSL, username, etc. The profile attribute is a specific attribute that's used as an example in AWS to point to credentials that are required. The resource block defines the resources that exist within the infrastructure. 
So for example, in my scenario here is, is that I'm actually deploying this towards ESXi and I'm creating a virtual machine and all the parameters that are supporting that virtual machine. And in fact, I'm using cloud in it within the virtual instance to do the configuration management on top of leveraging Terraform. So you can stack these capabilities together to drive a complete outcome. Now Terraform in it, this is where we prepare our working directory. So the specific details of how I communicate with the provider or service on the other side. And it creates a couple folders. One is .terraform and the lock file. Now validate, this is where we're gonna check whether or not the, the, the configuration is valid. And you can see here, I ran the command against my particular instance and it, it was successful. But if I make a change, I can see very quickly that there is a configuration uh, error. It tells me exactly what line the error is and, um, and I can fix it accordingly. Now Terraform plan, this is now where we're gonna show changes required by the current configuration. So what's gonna happen when I deploy this? It's gonna look and evaluate whether or not adjustments can be made, whether or not it needs to destroy and rebuild. Uh, but the bottom line here is, is that this is a new instance and you can see that I've got a couple of virtual machines that are gonna be created with specifics that I've called out. Now apply, this is where I'm gonna go ahead and actually create and make changes within the infrastructure, go into uh, connect to ESXi and create the virtual machine and uh, power it on and go through anything else that I might have. Again, power on was based on my configuration. You don't have to have it powered on, but it's gonna include the disk, the size, the, the firmware, the, the storage location, the, the guest name, etc. And then destroy does exactly what it suggests, right? It's gonna take, attract everything that it's built and it's gonna destroy it and remove it. Think of this as the uninstall button. Now, Cisco and Terraform resources, there's tons out here. I've included some links, but if you go to Terraform registry, type in um, Cisco DevNet or look at that namespace, you can see there's ACI, there's FMC or Firepower Management Center, there's Tetration or Cisco Secure Workload. Um, you've got Cisco ASA, but SD-WAN, Intersight, there's a bunch of registry uh, entries from DevNet on Terraform. And then also consider going to the GitHub instance for DevNet. There's tons of resources there, including packages for Terraform as well. And finally, this is a selfish plug, but I've got a channel with a ton of Terraform uh, builds as well. And this is with Firepower Management Center. You can see here, there's, they're broken up into snippets. Anyways, check it out. Terraform and Cisco, some really cool stuff.